There's a guy named Robert H. Richards IV. He lives in Delaware. Uh, he's an unemployed guy. And he's living off of his trust fund from his incredibly rich great-grandparents. Now, who were his great-grandparents? Well, they led the DuPont Chemical Dynasty. I mean, this thing is a powerhouse worth so much money. So, Richards really is this embodiment of what I call Paris Hilton Syndrome. Just this insane amount of wealth inherited, not earned, and just beyond reason amount of wealth when you didn't actually do anything, you know? I got no problem with people inheriting enough money to be, like, secure, you know? Like, okay, you could live. You could live. But this is like you could live like a fucking king and you didn't do shit. Well, it turns out that he was charged with fourth-degree rape in 2009. He allegedly fingered his daughter while masturbating and also assaulted his son. Woo, I mean, this is a really, really loathsome guy, man. Just sick and twisted, and, and he admitted to the charges. And he was initially indicted on two counts of second-degree child rape. So those are felonies that translate to a 10-year mandatory jail sentence per count. But you ready for this? What happens next will make you lose all of your faith in America and all of your faith in humanity and all of your faith in this vague concept, this abstract concept we call justice. Richards hired one of the state's top law firms because he, of course, has the money from his trust fund and he was offered a plea deal of one count of fourth-degree rape charges which carries no mandatory minimum prison sentencing. And he accepted, and he admitted to the assault. So, then, Judge Jan Jordan sentenced him to a rehabilitation program rather than prison, and said she did it because, quote, he wouldn't fare well in prison. Wow. So, apparently, as long as you have this gigantic trust fund and you have these resources to pay for the best kind of defense imaginable, you can cut some sort of creepy, scary, awkward backroom deal with the judge. Your lawyer could do that. And you can actually get away. You could literally get, get away with rape. You know, in the article I was reading about this, and I read a few to make sure I got all the facts here, uh, there were a, a bunch of articles that made clear, hey, 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 this is not something that happens. Like, this doesn't happen when we're talking about a sexual crime, especially a crime of this degree, of this magnitude. Sure, there, there are deals that happen, but when a deal happens, it's usually for something like a drug crime, for example. Because it's something that society views as, well, shit, if you want to make a deal for that, I mean, maybe that shouldn't even be illegal in the first place. So yeah, go ahead, no problem. Okay, this is a guy raped his daughter. And his son, assaulted his son too. And he just gets rehabilitation program. Because, oh, he's too, he wouldn't do well in, in prison. Really? Would anybody do well in prison? Anybody who goes to prison? Like, oh, this guy, he can handle it. Like, what the, nobody wants to fucking go to prison. It's terrifying for everybody. God, to say that there are two different justice systems is the understatement of the year. You know, there was the affluenza case recently with the kid who got away and his argument was, whoa, 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 I, I never understood the consequences of my action be, actions because I'm a spoiled prick, so you have to continue that trend and let me continue to not get the consequences of my actions. And the judge did! You know, if anything, that would make me go in the opposite direction. Oh, really? You're admitting that you're a spoiled prick and you don't understand the consequences of your action? All the reason why I should punish you more this time to make up for all the other times that you weren't punished. This is the same thing, essentially. The, oh, well, you don't understand, he's got a lot of money and he's, you know, he's this trust fund baby and he's been spoiled and he's been, you know, had this great life where of leisure where he didn't have to work or anything. So you can't take a guy like this and put him in prison with all the other regular people. He's above the regular people. A crime is a crime is a crime is a crime. If somebody rapes like he did, 
I don't give a fuck if you're black, if you're white, if you're Asian, if you're tall, if you're short, if you speak six languages, if you speak no languages, if you're good at, at golf, if you're good at ping pong. It is irrelevant. The crime is what matters. The crime itself. But apparently if you have money and you can afford it, and by the way, I don't even know, there might be something creepy and sneaky going on behind closed doors here, you know? I mean, I don't have the evidence to, to make a... a a declaration and say there's definitely corruption here, but for a, a judge to make this much of an outlandish, outlandish decision and let somebody get away with just rehab after raping, it makes me think that behind closed doors there's a little, you know, here, tell you a little bit of money, just make sure you give them the deal. <laughs> Again, I don't know, that's pure speculation, I could be totally wrong, but either way, it's ridiculous. It shows you that if you have money, you live on a different planet, you know? If you have a lot of money, if you're a middle-aged white male, I mean, you have such a tremendous advantage over a, you know, a teenage black kid or a teenage Latino kid or, or a black female or a, a minority female. I mean, it's just, it's one of these things where it, there, there are different standards for different people. I, you know, I see it in my own life, where if I'm out, it, I mean, look at how I'm dressed, right? This this shirt isn't really all that professional, but you guys know how I dress usually. I'll have just a button down like this, but more professional in the jacket. If I'm out in public, people treat me like I'm some sort of CEO, because I look like, oh, look at him. Oh, a, a young adult white male, he must be doing fantastic for himself. Meanwhile, if you see, I mean, what really is the difference, you know? What really is the difference between me or some kid who's... Uh, 21-year-old black kid wearing a hoodie. You can't judge anything just based off of that, you know? There's plenty of white guys with suits that are criminals and assholes, and uh, there's plenty of white guys with suits that are good people. There's plenty of black guys in hoodies that are that are good people and hard workers, plenty of black guys in hoodies that are assholes. But it's just these perceptions override reality so often. And when it shows in this kind of an egregious way, it just it blows your mind. Because it's like you disregard all of the actual evidence of this is a bad guy raping kids, doing all these terrible things, spoiled his whole life. They just disregards that completely. Why? Because he's got money. He's got money. He's got the trust fund. He's from the great DuPont family and he looks clean and okay, fine. Just he gets uh, rehabilitation. Really, if it was a... If it was a black guy named Tyrese from Compton, would he have gotten away with just rehabilitation? I think we all know the answer to that question.